Welcome to Akasha Talks, a podcast on consciousness, healing, and different ways to interact and weave those together, both old and new, to be able to get the most out of your life. I'm your host, Lance Baker, coming to you from Newcastle, Australia. Hope you kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome back, Matt. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. It's been a long time, but not between episodes for me. <laughs> you were vastly by far the quickest return uh, a guest, and it's been like nearly two years. Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard to keep track these days, mate. <laughs> I could fit a decade last year, so uh, that's why. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, I'm I'm excited for this. Uh, for for those who haven't been following Matt's podcast in between, uh, we essentially did a kind of a part one to this, but also works as a part two for this. They 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 sister up uh, a couple of months ago mm. uh, of talking about um, pendulums and the Pleiades, and we mostly talked about pendulums on on yours um, mm. today. I am excited to get Matt to, uh, to tell us about the Pleiades and the Seven Sisters. Oh, well, thanks for having me, Lance. It's really nice to be back. And, you know, it, it, this year's been a long decade, absolutely. And um, But, you know, it wasn't, it, it seems like only yesterday that you were on my, my podcast. So, you know, I think we did it uh, the week before the election. Is that right? Or it was like... Um, a fortnight before the election. Yeah, it was really close to it. We were hyped. The, yes. the sisters were with us. We were hyped. Um, so, you know, guys, the, the election came and went. Um, it was an interesting time, as elections often are. They don't, they, you tend to sort of uh, step into a kind of hyperspace when, when you're in that kind of tiny window of like 15 minutes, or I think we had 28 minutes with this election. And, um, you know, it went off perfectly. Uh, we didn't, I didn't get a hitch on my end. Lance, how are you on yours? Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah. it was, it was compressed time as well with that. Uh, it's, uh, I've, I've never felt that busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I was, um, I was engraving cabochons in, in Melbourne and, uh, you know, I think, uh, 28 or 40, 42 minutes beforehand, you were doing the same sort of thing in Newcastle, suffumigating and consecrating talismanic discs. And, um, you know, when we say that it all went off without a hitch, that's not necessarily being glib. It can very much go wrong. Um, you know, with, with, um, elections, with, uh, talismanic elections for astrological magic, you know, the candles cannot light or the charcoal won't light or you spill something or the gemstone itself goes missing. There's a 10 million different ways in that hyper compressed slice of time when you can realize that it's not going to work. Um, so thankfully the sisters were with us and we were I able to complete it. I had some issues with one of my candles. Uh, it was it was outdoors though because I was working with with the resin that's highly toxic and uh, seemingly less toxic than than I thought it was because I have been doing it inside since. But that was my first run with resin, so I was like sticking to the rules. This no, outside. all good, all good. <laughs> Thankfully, the incense wasn't toxic; it was just fennel seeds and and um, and frankincense. So you know, we got off lightly. Some of some of the incenses for some of the other planets and and fixed stars, you know, the, there's pepper and there's all sorts of horrible things in there. So yes, I was craving pork because I was holding pork all the time. Yeah, <laughs> you're like pork. Oh, it's breakfast. <laughs> Come on, no, no. But we we made it through, and and here we are. Here we are. Just uh, you know, three and a half or three short months later. <laughs> It's, it's been it's been a ride and for for those who haven't um listened to to matt's podcast yet, this this is what we're talking about we we made a talismanic pendulum matt made 
the the pendulum and i made pendulum discs to to go with that uh that's the election bit we're talking about here Mm. yeah they are fun they are lots of fun yeah lots of fun the um the the pendulums are, are nice and good and i'm happy with them um, and, you know, I'm always reticent to say that I'm skeptical of anything really in this game. I have to often remind myself what I actually do for a living when I say things like I'm skeptical. But, you know, when Lance, when you first came to me with the idea of a pendulum board, um, which is clear resin and contains organite, um, I was a little bit skeptical about it. But then I got these in the post last week. Um, you very kindly sent me down the first four uh, you know, production ready, like ready to go out pendulum boards. And, um, this, this thing's amazing. It just absolutely radiates energy. And I don't know whether it's because you're particularly good at making talismans yourself or whether the the function of the organite is just so potent, but, um, I could feel these the moment I sort of, you know, took them out of the wrapping and I just popped them down. I managed to get them down finally tonight, just before we started recording. And I threw some cards on them um, and, you know, they're, they're really good. They're really good. So these pendulum boards will do the trick for divination work and, and I'm assuming, you know, not just pendulum work, right? Like, Yeah, I've, I've used it for runes and I've uh, done some geomancy shields on them uh, and, and Tara and mm. Venomon and the actual pendulum uh, and it's, it seemed really nice for all of it so far. Yeah. yeah, it definitely has the vibe. It has the the hair standing up on the back of the neck vibe, which has kind of been my um, my experience with the Pleiades. So we've we've had three months, really, like kind of two and a bit months, to sit with the Pleiades ensouled in these talismanic objects. And, um, you know, my, my initial experience with them has been um, initiatory, to say the least. Uh, and we were just chatting before we hit record about how, you know, the, the spirit contact stuff goes through the roof for me. Um, not typically part of my repertoire. I mean, I get messages and I connect with guides and what have you as part of my job, but it's never been the, um, the main strength uh, in terms of tools in my toolkit. But since the election, that's been um, a different story. That's It's been far more accurate, far more intense. Um, and I think you've sort of mentioned, like you mentioned similar kind of effects as well. Yes. Yeah. That stuff has popped up more for me than mm-hmm. usual. And uh, I found myself being more open about the weird spirit stuff than I usually am. I've been a lot less closeted uh, about death-based stuff uh, since then. Mm -hmm. And right after it, I got invited to uh, a friend was put on a a demo workshop sort of thing where we all got together and talked about death. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got a little card that tells me when I'm, uh, when I'm going to die to like think about how short life is. It's, I'm not, it's not a curse. I'm not going to die in two years like the card says, but Jesus, to have this, uh, thing. the girl who hosted the party got a week. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. She's still alive. So oh, I'm, she's still here, good. I don't know tracks. It's okay. <laughs> uh, but it's been handy. I've got it in my wallet and I like every time I open my wallet and my wallet is my phone. So uh, every time I open my phone as well, I, I see this card and it's been a good reminder of well, my living life. Mm. Mm. Uh, so the sisters have been there in that living and and death sort of thing and mm. and uh one of the other things we talked about beforehand has been like subarus uh <laughs> Pleiades and uh and i didn't know the link of subaru and Pleiades before we planned this election and then since mm. then i've heard the story of a dozen people <laughs> telling me about did you know this uh and yeah plays have popped up everywhere subarus have popped up everywhere uh, yeah yeah uh, i would say one of the sisters uh electra um uh, has been popping up everywhere uh it's, they've been letting themselves be known uh, uh absolutely it's they 
have been a little anal uh, with the production of different things. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, oh, I've got half a dozen of these that were not fit for the quota. Mm. <laughs> and what it is, and, and each one I made, they like taught me something new that I've got a bunch shelved. <laughs> mm. Yeah, they'll they'll do that. Um, planetary and, and star and you know stellar spirits generally. Uh, you know, if if they really like you, they'll they'll be really hard on you about what they want. Um, and so you know, the design of the the pendulum, for instance, like I had to include. I'm just going to switch my camera. Um, so I had to include uh, a, a couple of things. So there's a motif of eyes. So above each of the um, sides, first of all, it's a seven sided pendulum. And I'm going to try my best to do the Dan Oz direct thing here. Um, <laughs> the, it's a seven-sided pendulum. Each side has one of the sisters' names. And they were also quite insistent that there be some sort of eye or eyeball motif in the um, in the design. And this is kind of the culmination of about five or six different versions of the design um, that I've been through. And they appear happy with this. Um, so, you know, he's hoping at least it's, I haven't used the pendulum, right? And so tonight is going to be my, my first ever use of a pendulum. Um, I suppose you could say professionally. So I'm really looking forward to, um, seeing whether or not I've, I've managed to pass the test. You've used yours though, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, cool. Quite a bit. Uh, and, and yet the, the pendulum is, is perfectly weighted, like, um, some of the original things we talked about after receiving this, I was like, oh, I'm glad we didn't do those things like this. Yeah. Has like the ideal weight, shape, and, and design for somebody who doesn't use pendulums. Uh, you've done an amazing job. Uh, oh, it's not me. It's, it's it. all upstairs, you know. I, th I thought I just drove a Subaru because I'm a dad, but it turns <laughs> out the sisters have been with me the whole time, um, you know. Interesting sync though, uh, one that that isn't written about in the ancient scriptures is GPS fucking stopped working for me the second that I finished the election. So, um, you know, you've had your own sort of uh, car sync related stuff. And for me, it was just, I have no ability to get anywhere using my car. It's so unreliable now with GPS. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And that was um, the day of the election and then hasn't stopped since. Gee, so you know just word to the wise gps may not be so reliable <laughs> the, the sisters may have actually had contact with me about, about seven or eight years ago uh, in that same thing uh, mm. had a run of clients um when they were coming for like meditations at night time and stuff tell me the gps when i was at merriweather didn't send them to merriweather it sent them to islington really to Oh, no way. <laughs> very different address. Yeah. Very different service. <laughs> same street name. I'm trying to think of streets in Merriweather that are the same street as name, Islington. Numbers, not the same. Nothing. It was like... Different business name, not branches of healing, erotic services.com. No. Or, oh, okay. Like uh, 111 Maitland Road. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, upstairs. Uh, my place was upstairs. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. I don't know. That one Goodness. always intrigued me of how. <laughs> how does that vastly different address happen? Oh, goodness. Vastly different service. <laughs> I, I haven't had any such misadventures. I just end up in weird industrial parks or, you know, like suburban streets when I'm meant to be at, at, at different places, put it that way. But, um, no, yeah, it, GP, GPS is one of those weird sinks that they don't tell you about. Maybe they're taking a place where seven sisters live. Maybe, maybe. Maybe it's, it's interesting, right? Cause like with, um, with the Pleiades, it's, they're so ubiquitous. They're so ubiquitous. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. If you want to sort of take a, um, I guess an atheistic materialist historical lens, um, the Pleiades astronomically are situated really close to the ecliptic. Um, and the ecliptic is the kind of the general solar system plane of where all the planets sit. So from our perspective on Earth, you can look up and see that the sun appears from our perspective to go along the same line as the moon and the other planets that you can see with the, the naked eye. And some stars sit very close to this. And that sort of, you know, from... 
I guess that kind of official history lens uh, makes the Pleiades quite prominent in not just European world mythology, but all world mythologies, right? Um, I've done just the, the tiniest bit of research on the Pleiades because it's it's a rabbit hole, let me tell you. Um, but just about every culture um, everywhere on the planet has a story about the Pleiades. And I think that we can look at it from that perspective as, okay, so they're quite close to the ecliptic, therefore they would have been quite noticeable. Um, but you can take another view on this, which I think is quite interesting, um, because all, most of the, uh, you know, most of the legends, and if you're looking at something so ubiquitous as the Pleiades, um, you're not going to get exactly the same story in every context, but some of them are, are ridiculously similar. And most of them are about seven siblings, yeah, with one invisible. Yeah. Sometimes they're seven brothers, sometimes they're seven sisters. Um, and, you know, it's always there's six of them that you can see and then there's, a, there's one that's hidden. And astronomers um, have looked you know, astronomers who specialize in the history of the universe have looked back at all the models and, you know, they can only pinpoint a time roughly 100,000 years ago when the seventh Pleiades would have been visible to the naked eye. Um, so there's a kind of current of world, you know, historical or world mythological imagining that has this story that seems to have been with us for, you know, at least 100,000 years, which depending on which version of history you, you sort of subscribe to is either, you know, preposterous because we've only had civilization um, that's kind of been recorded uh, orally for about 25,000 years. Um, but I, I like the way that they've just always been here. So much like the Subarus that we've always driven and now suddenly realize are the Pleiades, I think that there's, you know, there's an element of the makeup of society and culture and civilization that are kind of heavily dependent on this, you know, similar cultural kind of theme that runs through a lot of mythologies. It, it's crazy, Lance. Like the, the research has been amazing and I haven't even begun to dig to, to scratch the surface on it. it. It does my head in about that, that they, they know they're seven. Yeah. They can only see six. They've all got that mythology in different cultures. But since having this, I've been like, well, maybe it's not, it's been around for that long, the story, mm. that it's gone down by generations of old oh, ones gone missing. So this is the story about these stars. Mm. Because that also is a big stretch of like the Chinese whispers of stories that it, that bit wouldn't get lost. Uh, but they're, they're the sisters that, Finding the unknown of yeah. contact. It's like, well, you know, somebody in each of these cultures heard the sisters 100%. and heard the story uh, that they all know that from spirit contact. Mm. Uh, or aliens come to Earth and they told them because they flew past it and they said, no, no, there's seven. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> more subscribed to the latter than the former, but. It's funny that you mentioned Chinese whispers um, because uh, I'll give you an example of the similarity, right? So there, you know, the the cultural inheritance for us in the West comes from the Greeks. Um, that's a, a nice point to kind of start with, although that in itself is a kind of confluence of of prior civilizations that have been sort of syncretized into the Greek imaginary. Um, but the story that we get from the Greeks is that there are these seven sisters called the Pleiades. Uh, who were the daughters of Atlas. And when Atlas was tasked with carrying the heavens on his back, Orion, the hunter, decided to go after them. Yeah. And they were being chased perpetually. And, you know, Zeus decided to turn them into stars, basically, um, as a means of delivering them from, you know, the advances, the unwanted advances of this hunter, Orion. And that explains their position, you know, <clears throat> in the constellation, in the firmament. Um, and that's a nice little, you know, um, myth from, um, you know, the Mediterranean from, let's be generous, you know, three and a half, 3,000 years, you know, um, ago um, that's kind of reached us today. But then if you go to the Western desert and cultural block kind of area of Australia, 
um, that kind of 600,000 square kilometer area in Western, the Western Australian continent, where most of the language groups um, for Indigenous Australians are roughly similar. Their story of the Pleiades is of seven sisters who were pursued by a hunter and who sort of, you know, were um, took their sort of rest in the heavens, basically. I don't want to butcher the song line too much, but the gist of it is that there were seven sisters and they ended up in the heavens after being, you know, um, pursued by a hunter uh, romantically that they weren't too interested in. Um, you see, that's for, that's phenomenal, right? It's it's ridiculous to kind of think that there could have been cultural contact between ancient Greece and Indigenous Australia in that part of Australia. The Seven Sisters is a is a pretty prominent song line in the Indigenous uh, cultural milieu, and there are different tellings of that same story depending on where you are. From from my area in southeastern Australia, it's a little bit different. The sisters fill more of a Promethean kind of function, um, or crow the crow fills that function because they they held the fire and. And then they were um, they departed, and then the crow stole the fire off them again. Not meaning to butcher song lines, but there's that one sort of similarity in apparently totally disparate uh, cultural groups and historical groups and timelines and worldviews and imaginaries. But it, it's it's similar in in a way that's kind of mind boggling, and yet we see that same sort of narrative of seven sisters more more often than not. Um, finding their rest in the heavens after, you know, undergoing trials and tribulations on earth. Um, they're just here. They're just with us, I think, in a way that we we can't really fathom with our modern minds. Yeah. It's not so, mate. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's testament for as humans, we've lost contact with something that was naturally easy for seemingly everyone before. Yeah. Yeah. So we get De it back there. Definitely. And, and now, thanks to these, we've got a we'll get our own plug line back into that. Yeah. And it's it's powerful and it's it's potent energy. Um I might just give a plug for one book because I can hear Gordon's blood boiling all the way in Tasmania without mentioning starships. Um, which is kind of where I, I guess he gives a much more erudite and um, elaborated and in-depth discussion of the role of the Pleiades in the world imaginary than I just tried to. Um, but look, I mean, it's it's a rabbit hole. Start with starships, though, and just, you know, see where you end up because once you see them, you can't unsee them. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's powerful. <laughs> <laughs> And it, when when we got onto this for uh, pendulums was was quite interesting too. Like you'd released a talisman set uh, for uh, what was it now uh, the healing one, and you'd put out one for a feminine one, and I was like, oh, it looks like a pendulum. Well, this would probably go all right as a pendulum if it was weighted better. <laughs> Well, it's here's another Pleiades sink. I think the one you're referring to is this. It's the it's the ring. No, no, it, no, was, it wasn't. Okay, okay, it wasn't. No, okay. that it was it was the one you did after that. So I, I had the ring, uh, right? And then it was um, I forget what it is. Um, so I, I don't I don't have it. Uh, you sent me a cab of it. Uh, okay, red stone. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, right. That was Raz Al Hag. That's, that's the it. yeah, yep, 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 yep. Yes. Mm. Uh, so yes, that that one. You had a well, it kind of looked like that. That started a conversation of the ladies that worked ourselves up for a year and a half about it. Yeah, definitely. Well, look, I mean, I will bring the ring into it as well because you've got one of these rings. And I've got one of these rings and it's um, a, I'll just quickly switch back to my Dan Oz view. I'm going to call it Dan Oz view tonight. Um, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, um, <laughs> it's, it's a third lunar mansion and Venus in Taurus ring. And the way that the lunar mansions operate um, in the Arabic astrological world is that they, they often find themselves ascribed to star clusters that aren't necessarily 
um, you know, uh, at the same longitude and latitude using a tropical zodiac. The third lunar mansion, Alpha Rhea, is associated with the Pleiades, um, even though it's located between 29 degrees or 24 degrees uh, tropical Aries and, and, you know, eight degrees of tropical Taurus and the Pleiades are located at 29 to 29 degrees of tropical Taurus to zero degrees of Gemini. Um, they have this kind of weird uh, synchronicity with the Pleiades, which is just as real as anything else. And I think it was, you know, not only Ra's al Haq, but also the, um, the discovery on your end that, you know, there's this deeper link with the Pleiades and the third lunar mansion than I'd previously realized that kind of got us onto Pleiades as a, you know, as a possible target for astrological magic. Um, and just as well as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> we didn't plan it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so and look, the, the pendulum idea was yours. I don't, I don't um, tend to depart too much from, you know, uh, rings and, and pendants and things that can be worn or carried on your person. And, you know, I think it was you that got the message that it has to be a pendulum. It has to be something that, you know, you can use for, for divination specifically as a tool for divination rather than something you just have on you when you're throwing cards or, or you know, doing chart readings. So, mm. Yes. And that uh, testament to the, that ring, like the energetic um, power of that, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not wearing it today. Uh, and like as soon as we started recording and talking uh the finger i wear it on uh, has an energetic buzz around it where that ring would be but it's it's upstairs above me yeah right on my hand and uh i within a week of getting that ring um i was able to feel it when i wasn't wearing it if i tried to connect with it uh and that blows my mind <laughs> I get that buzz, uh, and this is the only time I felt it where I didn't ask to feel it. It was just like, it's like, hey, you didn't put me on, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, uh, where, where you're talking about me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, it, it's it's a, it was a potent series, and again, I think it was something that was at that very beginning stages of us planning out the Pleiades as a as a as a possible collaborative series that we could put out. Mm. And yeah, look, I mean, Pleiades, Pleiades everywhere. That's that's typically, you know, my mantra these days. And I'll find little sinks that pop up where, you know, often in familiar territory as well. Like, for instance, my car, right, which I bought um, or which I acquired, sorry, like, uh, you know, quite some time before we even considered doing the election, but which has come, you know, where, where it's come to light, for instance, that, you know, there's that pre-existing connection with the Pleiades. I think astrologically, there's far more of those tiny little sinks that we'll find um, once we sort of work a bit more with this, with these products that we've kind of managed to produce, um, where the Pleiades are just going to be there, constantly looking over us, so to speak. And interestingly enough, it's um, I guess it's one of the the sort of pathways that you could take into divination. Uh, it's one of the pathways that you can take into any of the other significations of the Pleiades, at least from the texts that that, that I've been using for astrological magic so yeah so what what are the, the key sort of things that agrippa and warnock and everybody say for uh for the Pleiades? yeah yeah no worries look I'll, I'll read from the man himself um cornelius agrippa uh look the quote from three books of occult philosophy book two chapter 32 is uh you know the pleiades um rules rock crystal or quartz crystal which is the you know material that we've used to create the talismans um amongst other things and uh you know also the you know uh, fennel and um, frankincense and quicksilver as as a metal there was no quicksilver used in this by the way and uh, later in book two chapter 47 um agrippa says that you know it's the figure is a little virgin or the figure of a lamp and its use is reported to increase the light of the eyes, to assemble spirits, to raise winds, to reveal secret and hidden things. And similarly, Hermes, another writer from, from the medieval period, um, says that fennel seed with frankincense and quicksilver placed under a crystal with the character shown, that is the sigil that we've engraved 
on the cabochon and which is present on the board. Uh, protects the light of the eyes, gathers demons and spirits of the dead to come and speak and makes the wearer to know of secret and hidden things. So there's, I guess, one straight off the bat that um, one signification that I haven't personally noticed, which is my eyesight hasn't improved. In fact, it's probably gotten worse uh, <laughs> since the election. It's also <laughs> because you're getting old. Yeah, it's probably because I'm getting old and I'm also <laughs> a, a jeweler, so I work with very tiny things that are difficult to see. Um, but also, um, you know, the, the rest of the, the significations are, are spot on, basically. Um, revealing secret, secret and hidden things, um, you know, uh, gathering demons or spirits. I mean, you have to be a little bit uh, tricky with how you kind of interpret demons and spirits. I'm not, a, I'm not a ceremonial magician, so I don't work with demons, but I do find a lot of spirit contact with my work normally, and that's been ramped up to 11 since the election. Um, and knowing of secret and hidden things, which has been an interesting quirk, um, quite often in the fortune telling game, people will, will divulge quite a lot when they're having a reading. Um, but it's been those instances outside of work um, and outside of intimate friendships and relationships where people who are only just acquaintances or sometimes randoms on, a, on trams and public transport will just all of a sudden divulge really intimate and deep kind of secrets to me. And I've been keeping one of the cabochons on me. I haven't kept the whole pendulum, but I've, but I've kept one of the talismanic stones on me since the election just to test the effects. So spirit contact up, um, not, not in a terrifying way, just, you know, if you're already sensitized to that, you can expect more of it. Um, gathering spirits around you. Uh, if you're doing divination work, I think those methodologies that rely on that more than just sortilege or, or similar, that's going to hit you pretty hard. Um, and then just randomly finding out um, quite sort of intimate and sometimes shocking things about people you hardly know. Um, if you're into that, well, you're in for a treat. Um, otherwise, just expect it to be a, a pleasant or, or otherwise surprise. <laughs> I haven't noticed a big shift in that people telling me secret things, but like I work as a therapist. So yeah, that happens every day. For me. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to watch for that more now uh, to see how it's happening outside of that with people who don't know that about me to see if that's part of the equation. Mm. Uh, could well be. Could well be. Uh, the the other thing pendulums have been used for uh, that I haven't tried with this yet uh, is for, for dousing, for finding treasure and for mm. finding oil and for finding water, like, Farmers and oil miners use them all the time uh, to to do things. And uh, energy companies to find oil wouldn't be hiring somebody to to douse for them where to drill uh, if they didn't believe mm. uh, have proven the value it might have served them in the past. But uh, you can you can get a map and and hold your pendulum over it, and it'll start to point in the direction of of the where the treasure is and you, you go further over and uh then what's that pointing a different way to narrow you back to where it is get a more zoomed in bit of that map go over that uh away you go so i don't know many like buried pirate treasures in australia so it's not going to be super easy for me to find it but it's criminal land so uh there probably could be some caches hidden away here and there well you never know down my way it was gold mining towns so you know <laughs> Big gold rush era, so who knows? You could find uh, Ned Kelly's fortune somewhere. Yes, <laughs> you you have to have a play with this before uh, before you do some Leo. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'll get me the gold. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh dear. Look, I'm I'm really keen to get um, cracking on this pendulum stuff, mate, because I haven't like I I, I use talismans by wearing them. That's mm. that's kind of how I how I use them. Yeah, I put them on and the effects follow me or I put uh, a particular object in a particular place and the effects manifest in that place. But this is the first talisman that I've I've made um, that has a use function that's uh, augmented by the talismanic quality. Um, so you're going to teach me, aren't you? 
I am. You yes. and everybody get a gift here today. So part of, of this release is, is not just like this this pendulum disc and the, the pendulum itself, but a, a instruction manual uh, that teaches you how to use it, uh, which you've got a copy and I presume you have not read yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. I only read my section of it. Sorry, yes. I'm such a I'm such a narcissist. <laughs> and, uh, and a USB stick with a, a video of of me teaching you. And and I have not uh, finished making that yet. So I know you have not watched uh, that. So everybody's going to get a, a bit of a demonstration of some of what will be in that video. So Matt, I got you to draw part of the calibration map that uh is in the book yeah i'll just switch to camera two and um just one second all right here we go there we, we go. go oh that's yeah beautiful circle thanks <laughs> <laughs> okay ah, i'm an artist what can i say so i want you to hold your pendulum yep uh in your arm mm -hmm. uh so that you you you're holding like the the um uh, crystal uh somewhere around your middle finger i find is best for me just okay tucking in, tucking in behind the middle finger yep, there we go um, yes yep. and over just the the gap of your your index finger so it can dangle down okay like and, this yes and Perfect. from there your elbow on the table mm -hmm. so that your pendulum is pointing to the middle of that cross and there's my hairy elbow fantastic okay yes cool <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it's pointing towards the middle of the cross. All right. Yes. All right, there we go. And just stare at that middle of the cross. Yeah. And so there's a line that's up and down mm -hmm. there on it. I want you to look at the northern end of that line mm -hmm. and then pass your eyes back down southeast. Uh, yeah. Keep running your eyes north east north east up down up down up down up down up down up down north east north east mm -hmm. the talisman's slowly starting to move that same direction everybody should be able to see here now you should be able to notice that more and more the more you look up and down up and down uh, it's swinging. Yeah, there we go. Up and yeah. down. Uh, and now I want you to look at uh, the across line. Mm -hmm. West and south. Mm -hmm. Left and right. Left and right. Oh, there we get Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and now uh, I want you to to look at the Circle from that west point and then start going clockwise around. Right. Around and around, around and around, 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 around. No and the camera's inverted, way. so it looks anti-clockwise to me, but I can see the yes is back to front, so that tracks for me. Uh, and now I want you to start spinning your eyes the opposite way around that circle. It always gets funny how it freaks out trying to start spinning the opposite direction straight away. No fucking way. Sorry, you gotta. I, I wish we had separate channels so you could just edit out me going, no fucking way. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I want that there. What? <laughs> that, that there is just the the power of your mind and your nervous system attached to it so that's that's just an idiomotor response your mind is thinking about something yeah. and your hand naturally follows uh that and as we talked about on on your podcast we're open and receptive to other things so uh we're not just gonna do your mind with this so now you can take that piece of paper away Mm -hmm. We don't need that anymore. We've, we've calibrated some things. So there we go. And now Just flick this light off so we get more. There we go. That should make it a bit more easy for everyone to read at home. 
put up the magical board there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now I want you to intend to connect to the Pleiades and invite Got it. the seven sisters to, to commune with you and to connect into that. A talisman and your hand, your arm, those fingers, your mind. Mm-hmm. And ask them to show you a yes. It's pretty straightforward. A yes. Yeah. Are they not? <laughs> ask them to show you. I know. All right. God, I wish this camera angle covered like my hand as well. So you can see I'm not just jiggling this around. (laughs) Here we go. Yep. There we go. Yeah. Ask him to show you maybe. That's interesting. It seems to have just stopped. <laughs> it's not. It's not as violently swinging as it was no. before. Uh, or maybe it's not as strong of an answer as a yes or a no, is it? Yeah. No. It's it's, it's dead still. It's gone dead still. Now show you an unsure. Okay. Uh, this thing's not moving anywhere, man. No, it is. I can see it on my screen. It, it was moving slightly with the maybe. It is moving slightly with the unsure, and it's it's in the direction of that, but it's it's small. But it's there. But there. Oh no! There we go. Not strong bits. Uh, and so, something that is talked about in that book is a, a yes is a yes, but sometimes a yes is yeah, and sometimes a yes is fuck yeah. Uh, and that size difference can show through with mm. these answers you get the enthusiasm uh, come through of how strong an answer is. And um, these maybes and unsures sometimes will be faint. No, we've got we've got a pretty strong unsure. Yes. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. Interesting that maybe it was just dead straight. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, ask for sure maybe again. Yeah, let's have a look at a maybe, please. No, that's that's hovering pretty strongly over maybe. Yeah, okay, fair fair enough. (laughs) Um, Okay, so now do you want to ask a question? Do I want to ask a question? Um, Oh, Jesus. Yeah, well, we've got to ask the question, which is did we do it right? (laughs) Did we do the election right? Are we okay? <laughs> there we go. There's okay. Yeah, that's a yes. That's cool. Yeah. That's nice. Thank you. Uh, what one I always like to to ask initially, actually, is, are you happy to talk to me? Uh, because yeah. you've just called somebody up. Uh, you got to check if they're happy to talk to you. Uh, that's that's a nice courtesy I find uh, to start. And I didn't teach you that before. <laughs> that's no, that's fair. That's I just a, blurted uh, out. I just cold called someone and said, uh, show, show me yes, no. And uh, when something I've been doing for the, or, I don't know, the past maybe six or seven years uh, with clients when I talk to their subconscious, the second question I ask uh, to be seeing what's been happening is, have you been listening in on the conversation we've been having? I'm I'm actually curious now if the Pleiades have been listening in on our conversation. Yeah, have you been listening in on the conversation we've been having? That's a yeah, that's a pretty strong yes. It's a stronger yes. That's a huge yes. Jesus yeah, yeah. Christ. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Now, 
we've also got some extra things on this pendulum board. Like I've I've made it a Ouija ish. Uh, that it's it's got numbers, it's got the letters, but I've also put in all the all the zodiacal signs and planetary uh, symbols there as well, so it can be used for astro magic and other sorts of divination things. So. Uh, What's a planetary magic question we can can ask you? What what's their favorite planet? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, well, that's always going to get a fun answer. All right, what's your favorite planet? What's your favorite planet? Let's see what we've got. That looks like Mars to me. Yeah, it looks like Mars. Yeah, it's hovering pretty closely over Mars. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Oh, I guess the hunter. In the story, would be Mars, but they were they were fleeing from the hunter. Fleeing it, from him. yeah, is it because you were fleeing from the hunter? What's going on there? That's weird. That's a that's a no. It's a no. Okay. Well, that's a huge no. Jesus, huge no. Okay. okay, okay. Ah, it's so difficult. You could, the way that I ask questions is always not. It's not. It's it's not closed. It's very open. This yes. is a massive no, by the way. Yeah, um, it is. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, that's fair. But that's that's the the tricky bit about getting used to to pendulums. It really helps if you can do closed questions. But but with mm. these boards, you can be open. Like you've you've got the chance to to spell things out, to count things out. Uh, it opens up a lot more choice of. I got one. Uh, were were human beings around to observe when there were seven of you? Yes. Interesting. And were those human beings um, comparably civilized in terms of advanced technology to say the, you know, the ancient Egyptians or the ancient Greeks or the Mesopotamians or whoever built Gobekli Tepe? Huge yes. Huge yes. Is here. <laughs> so human beings have been technologically advanced and on the planet for like hundreds of thousands of years and not what we accept at the moment from science. Massive yes. Wow, huge yes. Jesus. So donk you in the forehead in a minute, those yeses. Are... Yeah, I had to move my arm out of the way. It's going nuts. <laughs> this is cool. This is super cool, Lance. Mm. Wow. And, and so that's it. That's, that's, that's how you use a pendulum. That's fucking amazing. Pretty easy. Uh, you've got a good phone contact there. Now let's let's try something a little bit different then. Mm -hmm. uh, us, platies, if we can connect to to somebody that's that's dead that you might want to connect with. Um, uh, I, I can think of one person you probably would like to, but it's that might be not who you want to publicly. Uh, well, let's. Um... Well, I, th I think actually what we should do is we should try and connect to somebody that uh, is has passed away, but who isn't because I'm getting a yes off this. Basically, it's like yes. we can talk, we can talk to people, um, but who isn't connected to me? Okay, right? yeah, cool. So uh, let's try and connect to Mesma. Oh yes, yeah. Let's try and connect to Mesma. Okay, okay. You think I'd get over these Ouija board things like the excitement, the girlish excitement? <laughs> When I was like 17. All right. Okay. Just remind me, Lance, what's Mesmer's full name? Like Franz I, Anton. Franz Anton. Okay. I know it's not like a white pages scenario, but it's, you know, we want to get Franz Anton Mesmer. So let's connect to Franz Anton Mesmer. Jesus, this thing's just gone crazy. Okay. Okay. So. Um, so let's 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 ask a question to, that might get it swapping from uh, a yes answer. Just a check, Franz. Are, are you an African? <laughs> no, let's let's shifted it over. <laughs> yep. Cool. All right. Friends, is it okay for me to talk to you? I, I've got to start asking that yes. first. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're switching and it was a big yes, I wanted to get out of 
a yes. Sometimes you've got to ask for something that you're expecting a no to just to check your online and stuff as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, cool. It's a yes. It's a pretty big yes. This guy's really here, dude. Excellent. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's pumping. Yeah, cool. All right, what should I ask Franz Anton Mesmer? Um, I want to ask him about the light of the eyes. Yeah, I was going to say that what we yeah. picked up from Agrippa earlier. Um, yeah. Okay. No, no, that's a no. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. All right. That's a no. All right. So let's not ask about the light of the eyes. Damn it. That's the only question I could possibly think to ask. Lance, you're going to have to help me out with a question. I don't know okay. much about mesmerism. Uh, did, did you do astrological magic? That's a maybe. It's like a maybe, yeah. That's hilarious. He's being coy. <laughs> yes, he's being yes, coy. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you did astrological magic. Yeah. Okay. Um, Interesting. Well, it was astrological magic um, part of your healing process? Interesting. So I'm getting maybe. Yeah. Are, are you being coy again? It's it's hard to rely just on the pendulum because one of the effects of the Pleiades is increased kind of mediumistic yes. thing. So I'm getting that it was dependent on the patient. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that that's it. You you're getting into something else that, that is in the book and, and will be in the class of the the mediumship skills develop with this sort of stuff. So this is using like the, the pendulum and the board are, are a way of getting that message out. Mm. But your nervous system is the antenna that's bringing this in. Mm. So the Pleiades are connecting your nervous system to Mesmer's right now. And so you quite often do get thoughts with that as well. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, cool. Uh, Mesmer, would you be happy to teach me some of this later through uh, through this same process? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, that that changed pretty quick. Cool. Oh, that's a pretty hard yes, man. Cool. Yeah, Thank nice. you. Nice, nice. Yeah, nice. No, pretty. Look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, yeah. That's not lukewarm either. He's he's pretty keen. He's pretty keen. Uh, cool. Well. Uh, but yeah, very keen. Jesus. Excellent. We will we'll, we'll, we'll be in contact. No. <laughs> My people will call your people. Yes. Um, <laughs> Give you a call in private, mate. <laughs> wow. Well, look, I mean, you know, uh, there are some people who will be listening to this on audio and just hearing me say fucking, oh my God, and, and geez Louise and all the rest. Yes. Um, but I think as a as a proof of concept, this is pretty cool because the backstory is, folks, I don't know um, that much about dactylomancy other than that it's a cool word, word to say as often as I possibly can. Um, but I don't use um, the pendulum and I haven't previously. So this is kind of my first experience. I've used Ouija boards before, obviously, and there's other divinatory methods that I've used. But um as a means to kind of very visually in the moment have this kind of, I could, I could see how you could have a conversation with this. Yeah. So, you know, and it, we haven't even touched on the letters, the numbers that, yeah, this no. is cool. This is super cool. So as well, you always need to do like a, a good license to depart. Uh, mm. Thank you for talking to me and a goodbye. I, I like to check, is there anything else you want to communicate with me before? we say goodbye uh, so that you're giving them a chance in case there's something you need to know that you haven't asked or that they might want you to do for them if you're cool with that. Yeah. Um, I'll ask Mesmer if there's anything he needs to talk to us about before uh, we say goodbye for now. Yeah, totally. I've just, yeah, I've just kind of mentally asked him and the, we've got a pretty big swing in yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, here's where we'll tap into that um, mediumship thing a bit more because I don't know what that could be. Mm. Um, but that's a pretty open question. So, Mesmer, could could you give Matt a, a thought or an idea of, of what that might be if you want us to talk to you? Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Oh, interesting. He's got more to say but not to me. Okay. Interesting. I think he just wants you to whip out the board. Okay. And, um, you know, when we get off the call, maybe just go yes. nuts. It, That's probably a bit it, more is than that I get. want me to have a chat with you on our own. Yeah, okay, let's see that. Yeah. Okay, good. We will do that for sure. Uh, yeah. Buddy. Uh, I'll just reposition my hands here. There we go. I'm just trying to get as much of my hand in shots just to, to ensure we're not, you know. So, Mez, where I, I would... Thank you for coming to to visit and commune with us today. Uh, I'd like you to disconnect from from Matt there now, and you can come be with me, and we will chat. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and and do you see how like your your pendulum's just lost its life? Yep. Dead in the water. Dead in <laughs> uh, the water. That's, that's it. I think some thanks to the Pleiades as well. Yes. Um, definitely necessary because you know they're not malefic but they're not necessarily benefic you just want to make sure you're showing them but that's it can we connect back to the Pleiades now yeah let's do that there's that movement there yeah there we go and and so so sisters uh is is there something you would like us to talk to you about before we continue on with with that chat to the world about you. Yeah, no, that's a pretty strongish yes. That's a yeah. okay. medium to strong yes. Medium could, to strong yes. Would you be able to do the thing where you give Matt a clear thought or an idea of what it is you'd like us to ask you? Yep, they're good to go. And so sometimes with this, Matt, it helps if you close your eyes so you can open up to extra inner things. If you're visual, I'm not visual, so it doesn't help me, but for mm. some people, uh, that can help. Yep. And so, ladies, I'd love for you to give Matt a, an image, a picture, a thought, an idea, a sound, some inner knowing of what you'd love for us to communicate with you about. Kind of hovering over back over that Mars sigil. Okay. That Mars glyph. That's weird. I'm just gonna move my arm just to see if it does the same thing. Nope. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of doing the same thing. Just right. my arm again. Okay, no, no, no. That's 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 your answer. That's it's Mars. So, well yeah. yeah. So this is where we jump back into a question for clarification when we've got a hint of something. So mm. Pleiades, do you want us to talk to you about why you love Mars? Interesting. No. Okay. One of the things I'm noticing is that, like, the the board itself, right, is the conductor, like, it's such a conductor because mm -hmm. of the organite in it. And the pendulum is, you know, again, kind of like a focus point. So you you sort of connect it in and it, it takes you out of distraction. Yeah. Yes. And so when when they hovered over the um over the Mars glyph and then in response to the question, do you want to tell us why you love Mars so much? They went, no. Um, the message that I got kind of mentally was, you know, the question they've got for us is why do we love Mars so much or what's the connection with Mars? Yeah. Um, and that's what they want to leave us with is like, you figure it out. <laughs> okay, cool. Keep looking. I think that's probably a message for me because I'm, I'm getting sucked into this wormhole of um, this rabbit hole, sorry, of Pleiades knowledge. Is, and it's like, there's a, there's a something there for you basically. Uh here, here we go. Is is this like Mesmer just wanted to talk to me? You just want to talk to Matt about that off air later. No. Mm, interesting. Could it, be a message for humanity. It, is it you want Matt to 
to go down that wormhole and try and work that out on his own of why you would like Mars. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a yes. That's a strong it. Okay, cool. All there right. we go. Oh, that's nice. A little something for me. Fantastic. And very on on brand for spirit work generally, which is <laughs> you figure it out. We'll talk to you in a few months <laughs> slash years slash decades slash lifetimes. So so get ready for a Pleiades Mars uh, thing sometime in the future. How on earth would that work? I don't know. <laughs> uh... Okay. Interesting, interesting. That was an interesting little endpoint, actually. Um, yeah, cool. All right, okay. all, right. So, all right. Thank you for communicating with us, uh, and we'll, we'll chat soon. There we go. Straight back to nothing. Jeez. And so, so now I'd like you to put the disc aside for a second. Yeah, sure. And and we're going to do another quick one. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Go. For it. So, ho- hold the the talisman again. Yeah. Yep. There we go. And so this works as running gun stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we don't have the your visual cue there of where yes and no is. Mm. Uh, but Gladys, could we could we still talk to you this way? Uh, and there's a bit of movement there again, so we know we're connected. So yeah, Gladys, could you show us how you want to say yes to Matt on his own? When he, he's, he's just got this. There we go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, very, very cool. And very cool. like to say no. There we go. Interesting. Uh, thank you. Uh, you can go again. So that that bit blew my mind with uh, with this. Thank you for showing up and you know, like all all due respect, right? Not thank you. You can go again. Lance, you've got to you've got to work on how to talk to spirits, mate. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, we've said the nice goodbye before. Let's... Not trying to waste their time. Oh, fair. <laughs> them as they're walking out the door. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And uh I, I appreciate you coming through again. Thank you all. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah, uh, and and that's that's where this did my head in. Like, they they talked to me to design this thing, mm. and so I presumed it it was going to be up down yes, left right no. Uh, yeah, for for me when I was just playing with this uh, on on its own, just while I was sitting there holding it, feeling it out. Yeah, and for me it was um, it was up down for the yes so it was track at first I thought, yeah and then no was was anti-clockwise yeah um, it's been the same every time every time that i haven't had the board there um and so yeah if you if you're going out and about you can you have this in your pocket and yeah so you'll be able to use it to that full extent really but with this you can get down to make it more ritualistic and and more potent but doesn't mean you can't just use it well i think i think first of all the the board is its own separate talismanic item right so it's not necessarily um from my experience at least like i just i haven't had a chance to play around with it too much since they arrived but just before we got on the call i was throwing cards on it and the feeling of being able to tune in um was much quicker and much more accurate. Um, so I think the two work separately. Yes. You know, quite well and not necessarily combined just and and limited just to the medium of of pendulum work. Um, so, yeah, no, I think, um, yeah, that was really yeah. cool. I, I haven't tried it, but I'm presuming you'd be able to, like, put a planchet on this thing too and actually Ouija board it if you really wanted to. Um, I don't see why you would because... The only people that are having this are going to have a pendulum. They're going to have a pendulum, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you could. Um, yeah, if you get them both and somebody steals your pendulum or you lose it or something. All, all supremely likely, um, particularly with talismans. People steal talismans all the time. 
just just FYI. They um yeah, they they see them and they're like, oh, that looks really cool, and they get compelled to to steal them. Um but yeah, Lance, that was amazing. Jesus, that was great. That was my first ever like talis like you know, a pendulum uh, experience, like talismanic pendulum. Uh, right. Or any kind of pendulum. The, you were getting quite big responses there, which is rare for somebody's first rodeo with it. Uh, but I previously to this, pendulums were really minor of the significations what they they give in their response for me uh, i get idiomotor response great through my actual body and so mm. would always just use my body instead mm. um but as soon as i picked this one up and show me yes i was like oh this this is the clearest yes i've ever had out of a pendulum mm. uh, and most of that i think is is the talismanic aspect to it a slight bit of it is though it it's a really well crafted pendulum like the the weight and shape of it fits well to give that better response thanks mate oh. and with the weight and shape of it it's also a weapon it's also a weapon well you know so uh, if there's a hunter chasing you now well hey who knows where we'll be shipping these to, buddy <laughs> <laughs> you know that's you know not necessarily concealed carry it's it's got a, a separate function you know depending on the laws you have to consult the laws of where you're currently your jurisdiction. Um, the thing I love about this board, right, is that it's such a illustration of the juxtaposition of the two approaches that we've taken with this series, right? Because I've gone, um, you know, full of gripper styles with the the pendulum, right? It's coming from a place of, of um, you know, 15th century, 16th century, um, you know, Renaissance kind of astro magic. And, you know, the materials are pretty, you know, they're pretty stock, stock standard talismanic materials, silver, um, a gemstone and herbs placed under the gemstone in the tip of the, of the pendulum. And I love the fact that you've come in from a totally different angle with, you know, clear resin and uh, organite and all of the different ways in which you've been able to craft this thing. It, it, the, there is uh, the gemstones in there. There's, yeah. You can see the darker shades in the middle there uh a crystal and metal uh, yeah yeah it's, it's got the same talismanic elements but it's imagined in a very modern very exciting <laughs> very modern form and it's like a it's like a ufo in the best possible way right it's just this object from outer space and you know it, it's kind of radiating this this kind of you know you very unique energy um pleiadian energy you know to get really new age about it and um yeah, it's just nice. Like the two together, they're wonderful. I like the way that they just both approach the same thing from totally different angles. It's it's super cool and um, yeah, super potent too. That was really that was really cool. I'm buzzed. That made my night. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I look forward to hearing how uh, how it goes for you in between now. Uh, every time yeah. you go to the markets, I want you to do at least one reading with the pendulum. With a pendulum. Um, why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, that's a great way to test it. Just deep uh, end it with yes. clients immediately. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> In the back of the book, I do say like, don't don't work with other people straight away. But uh, you've had more than enough experience reading for other people. Uh, I think it probably would be safe. And if not, then you're like, well, that was shit. Uh, you get a free card reading. <laughs> Here we go. I've got. I, I tell you what. I've got some pretty adventurous clients. Um, some of my some of my oldies but goodies, the people who've been with me more or less since the beginning, um, I'm sure they'd they'd love a free reading, um, mm -hmm. you know, or something along those lines. So I'll get in touch with them, and you know, it's I think it's got ample scope to eventually join the stable of of different sort of um, modalities that I use for divination and for fortune telling. Yeah, that's super. Cool. I can't stop looking at it now because I'm like I'm going to ask so many questions. Yes, but later tonight, it's so cool. The, the message I drilled home on your podcast uh, I, I, I need you to get um, is you have to be clear of who you're dialing in. Mm -hmm. um, even when it's a place still to begin with, like clear that you're connecting with them. Because if you just pick it up and start asking questions, which is what the mistake most people make when they start playing with pendulums is they're playing. They just pick it up and they start asking questions. Mm. you don't know who you're asking if you're just asking questions uh it most likely will just be some part of your consciousness 
answering if you're just asking a question uh, or whatever random spirits around you uh, at the time. And they're not necessarily what you're looking for that answer from. Uh, however, that being said, asking to speak to your own consciousness all the time can be great. And there's lots of things in the book uh, about that. And we'll be in the class about that as well for, for using this as a self therapy tool as well to make yourself more amazing as well as have that open connection to any spirit you want. Yeah, no, very good point, actually. Yeah, I'm usually quite cautious about spirit contact, proactive spirit contact, um, you know, as a rule. But yeah, no, that's that's quite, thank you for reminding me. I'm chomping, yeah. at, the, I'm chomping at the bit to get on with this and I'm like, oh, shit, I better clear the space, burn some Palo Santo or something like that and just make sure we're, we're dialing in. Very yeah, it's sa just, sage wisdom. <laughs> because it gets so easy to start doing it. It can, uh, can catch yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, I have noticed though, like this seems to instantly just connect with the platys, but like I'm also carrying around one of the, the discs I made of the talismans uh, all the time at the moment. So that also could be amplifying the reason of why they're connecting straight away. And I'm using their tool rather than the tool that I normally use to talk to my consciousness. Um, so I, I think we're fairly safeguarded with these ones, but anybody listening at home, they're not going to have that. If they're like listening to this and going, oh, and grab a pendulum and do something right now. Yeah. Uh, they've got to know that lesson. Well, you know, this is my first experience with the, with the pendulum and I felt um, very connected and very able to kind of connect quite easily as well and i think that's that's down to the the talismanic elements of of the board and the pendulum themselves um yes. you know and and some people who have kind of i imagine natural tendencies and talents with dactylomancy or any kind of dowsing or pendulum work might be able to get similar results from you know anything suspended on a string um, and good luck to them that's great but i think for people who kind of want to hit the ground running in a huge way um then you know this is the stuff man that was cool uh and and the board's not the only thing you've got to to play with like in, in the book i've got a bunch of other things there yes. you can use as, as charts so like ones for healing of um what sort of thing you should talk to what part of your energy system what one of the sisters is trying to communicate with you uh what divination methods you could use what uh different kinds of healing tools you could use and then a bunch of blank ones you can fill your own in uh, yeah to pick between well given we're recording this as mercury stations why don't we try and do a plug for the for yes. the set all right so um we're going to release the set pretty damn soon guys uh hopefully fingers crossed and the set will include the pendulum which we've seen used tonight um, there'll be nice product shots of this up on the uh, the website with the listing, but this is a general indication of what it looks like. Uh, it's got two talismanic stones in there. There's one at the top, and that's a uh, quartz crystal cabochon engraved with the sigil of the Pleiades and suffumigated at the elected time. And it's got this little bead at the other end as a counterweight, also made from quartz crystal and uh, suffumigated at the elected time. Um, you get the book, uh, the bulk of which is Lance's um, sage opinions and wisdom and instruction in the art of using a pendulum. And a small section at the front is my contribution, which is the consecration ceremony and um, the uh, history, a brief discussion of the history of the Pleiades. And then I'm going to hand it over to you, Lance, for the rest of the, the, the set. The rest of the set. Uh, will be a USB stick of the the video class. And yes, that uh, talismanic disc there that you can see, which in, includes a little disc of, because uh, I, I didn't make, I didn't make all of these uh, on the day. That would have been too impossible to do in that 
tiny window of time. Uh, so I made a bunch of coins uh, for the Pleiades, which is what you can see in the middle with the sigil in there. Uh, and that's made of the same stuff. And then the whole disc is like the, the amplifier of that that spreads throughout. So it's, it's organite, which comes from Wilhelm Reich's thing. So it, it accumulates energy. So it accumulates and amplifies the energy of the Pleiades, which, as we've talked about, can not just be used for this. It's more uh, a placement for whatever sort of divination thing you want to do. Uh, but I also got uh, for it to be an altarpiece at times and things for if you want something to really energetically represent the Pleiades, uh, you've got something to, to situate things on when um when i actually did the the consecration of of the the pendulum itself uh when that'd come to me since uh you couldn't give it to me at the time of me doing these ones because i was <laughs> in the future from you yes <laughs> uh i did that separately months later and uh and i used i used one of these as that so i said my, my candles and, and my incense and everything on this board to to do the activation on it and and it was interesting I, I could I could feel a difference with that again but it could have just been because the sisters were um, more heavily around me since I was involved in the creation of the other part of this I, d I don't know uh, but it it felt big to me so yeah nice one yeah. No, I think uh, look, it's uh, look, it's worth your while, guys. If you're someone who is uh, interested in um, pendulums and uh, talismans, then yeah, it's right up your alley. If you're somebody who is, you know, wanting to connect with the Pleiades in a way that isn't just in the form of something that you wear, um, but also something that you can use to perform a function so closely aligned to the significations of the Pleiades, it's not funny. Then it's for you. Um, you know, and if you're somebody whose work involves divination and fortune telling and you're looking for literally an amplifier, because this is what this is, it's literally an amplifier um, for your practice, uh, then I reckon go for it. There's something in here for everyone, 100%. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. So there'll be a link in the show notes to Matt's website where you'll be able to, to buy it and uh, you can enjoy it. Yay. Uh, Matt, I have to thank you again for, for coming on. It's always a pleasure having, having Always a you. pleasure, mate. This is fantastic. This has been an absolutely fun project to do and, and nothing like what I ever, ever thought I'd be doing. And uh, my mind has been racing since of other little organite talismanic like projects I could do. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, look. I mean, once you get bitten by the bug, dude, you'll you'll be everything will become a talisman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so thanks again. And uh, if if people uh, are not quite um, interested in in getting this, but have been curious about this conversation, you can obviously tell Matt is uh, an, an ace divination man, but he's he's also a great astrologer. Uh, where can they find you if they want to book a reading of some description? Oh, look, just go to Dra Dragos Dragonstone Mercury Station, right? Dragonstoneastrology.com. Um, so all one word, dragonstoneastrology.com. And you can find, um, you know, readings. Uh, so you can book a reading if you like. Uh, you can find links to my podcast, which Lance has been on multiple times. Um and there's also the other talismans that I offer and make as well. Um, so check it out, dragonstoneastrology.com. I have most of, so I can. Yeah. They are. <laughs> they are, have some very interesting energy. And I've, I've had a fair few different talismans off different people, and none of them have the energy frequencies, the ones that I've got off my. You're a gentleman. Thanks, mate. You're great. Well, thank you. All right, buddy. Ciao. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode and perhaps learned something new. If you did, I'd love for you to subscribe or drop a review 
on whatever favorite podcatcher you have, or if you've been enjoying the video versions on YouTube or Facebook, do it there.